South Caucasus as the region between Armenia, Georgia, uh, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan uh, can act as a bridge between the east and west, north and south. And no single country should be plucked out and used as a weapon against Russia. Uh, so all these you know, middle powers, the great powers, uh, obviously including the United States, can basically divide up the interests without actually turning these countries into weapons against, against Russia. Um, because the policy just has not worked. Historically, it has not worked. Any, any Western powers, uh, you know, a couple of centuries ago, always wanted to utilize this geo geostrategic space uh, to weaken Russia, and this simply has not worked. Uh, and today's sort of uh, model of doing the same isn't working either. Hello, everybody. This is Pascal from Neutrality Studies, and today I've got an update for you about what's happening in the Caucasus. And I've got with me my uh, colleague and friend, Lasha Kazratsev. Lasha is an international relations analyst with a, with a focus on the states of the former Soviet Union. He concentrates on the South Caucasus and the Black Sea region and uh, regional affairs. So Lasha, welcome. Thank you, Pascal. It's good to be back. Lasha, uh, the the elections in Georgia are coming closer and closer, end of October. What is currently happening in the political process back home in Tbilisi? Well, I wish I had some good news, but uh, I think the pressure from the West is uh, increasing. Um, and there is now talk of uh, sanctions, uh, if I'm not mistaken, they've already sanctioned a couple of po politicians, uh, a few politicians in Georgia, and now they're, uh, you know, don't quote me on this, but there's some rumors circling around that they might be also looking at uh, Bidzina Ivanishvili, uh, the uh, honorable chairman and the founder of the Georgian Green Party. Um, so and the, the man is, with the power in the background right yes yes uh and, you know it's an open secret nobody denies this uh, in georgia uh but nevertheless uh the man uh is conducting politics uh uh in in terms of pragmatism the way i see it uh and i think he understands uh, that um, there are serious dangers that uh, the statehood uh, the georgian state faces and um, i think he understood that his party uh, understood that uh, uh you, know, you know things as usual just are not sustainable anymore and they need to really uh, develop this introspective foreign policy in the region um, and towards its uh, Western neighbors. Um, and basically, um, they've decided to conduct this policy of pragmatism with Russia, which where I don't see anything um, uh, wrong with, because uh, in, I believe that that's the only way to basically survive in this very tough neighborhood as a state. And given the short history uh, that Georgia had, and especially the 2008 war, uh, and if you analyze that war, uh, the reasons behind it, um, I think it becomes quite clear that uh, Georgia really needs to, uh, uh, I don't want to say reevaluate, Georgia will continue to, to, to remain a pro-Western state, um, contrary to all the sensationalism that has been coming out of the West. Uh, but uh, it, at the same time, needs to survive as a state, and that means finding, uh, you know, uh, you know, some common ground with with Moscow. Uh, and this is pure geopolitics, and this is pure national security interests, strategic national security yeah. interests, as far as I'm concerned. And um, it shouldn't be any other way. No, but the thing is also that it's not just Georgia, right? Georgia is important to Russia, but the entire entire southern ca Caucasus is important to to Russia from from its geo strategic vantage point, right? And in that southern Caucasus is uh, is also important to Iran <laughs> and is also important to Turkey. And if you look at the 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 the, the political relationship between Georgia, Azerbaijan, and Armenia. 
where do these three stand toward each other? Ar Armenia and Azerbaijan just had a war and the two, they hate each other's guts, like very much. Armenia is trying now all it can can to join the, the EU and, 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 and cuddle and cozy up with the West, like, like no, there's no tomorrow. Azerbaijan also has a good relationship with the West, sends uh, a lot of oil to the European Union. Um, and Georgia is kind of is Georgia is under, under a lot of pressure to choose to choose a side. And when when neocons and the West says that, they mean, of course, uh, do, you have to do what, what we want. So how how do the three interlink at the moment? Sure. Uh, so. We've been saying this um, for quite some time now that the Southern Caucasus as a geopolitical space, geopolitical region, uh, is sort of molding into what I would call just it's going back to its own regional principles of geopolitics. Um, so what's happening is basically uh, they have woken up from this dogmatic slumber and they're realized that the West um, uh, is simply not in a position to guarantee security uh, to Georgia. Uh, you know, promises remain, you know, stayed as such as promises ever since, uh, I would say, after, after 1995, uh, uh, when the United States started to really look at the region. Uh, it's been promising uh, the European Union and it's been promising NATO membership um, uh, with relative intensity, of course. But basically, that has been the um, narrative that's been coming out of Washington. Um, well, the 2008 war, I keep bringing it up, uh, is so important precisely because of this reason, because it really showed that there was no one coming to Georgia's aid. Georgia was not going to have um, security guarantees from Washington, um, much less, obviously, European Union. Uh, and it was basically left uh, to its own devices to, to uh, survive against Russia's invasion in 2008. At the same time, um, given politics and uh, that was coming out of Washington and you know, uh, sort of this whole neoconservative camp, um, they kept egging Georgia on against Russia. Uh, it's undeniable. Um, they can sort of try to hide this uh, any which way, but it's undeniable. There was plenty of literature on this uh, that if it were not directly involved in uh, um, provoking Georgia, it, it did so in, in terms of the language and narratives and, and false promises and half promises. And uh, on the one hand, you know, Saakashvili was told not to do it. On the other hand, sort of this Washington establishment would look the other way. Uh, but my argument is that if Washington wanted to, they could have stopped Saakashvili. There is no doubt in my mind that they could have stopped this from happening. Um, uh, and now we see this in, you know, with, you know, not the same exact manner, but uh, quite similar to what's happening in Ukraine and the sort of, you know, causality of what caused the Ukrainian war uh, was beside, you know, you know, had to do with, with this sort of propagandistic rhetoric. And then we all know what happened in, in March in, in uh, Istanbul, where they basically blatantly said, uh, told uh, Zelensky not to dare to make peace with Moscow. Um, so what does this tell us? What does this give us? This gives us today's reality, which is um, finally Georgia is realizing that it has to, to the extent that it can, uh, maximize its chances to survive. And it has decided under the current Georgian dream government to pursue the policy, foreign policy of pragmatism towards Russia. Um, and that means that there will, you know, there will be decoupling from this intense sort of normative foreign policy, uh, West, you know, Western normative foreign policy based on, you know, values. Um, uh, and it will take shape uh, and refocus uh, on uh, national interests, strategic interests, uh, and, and practical interests. Uh, as we all know, uh, the South Caucasus uh, is, is uh, replete with geoeconomic um, uh, 
uh, projects uh, that uh, you know projects that started uh, that had started you know uh, uh, back in the early '90s under Shevardnadze, the first president, uh, uh, the, the first uh, you know uh, post. Uh, he was a, he was a, a foreign policy chief under the Soviet Union, and then he became the president president of Georgia uh, after the uh, overthrow of the first democratic democratically elected president, Vyacham Sahodia. Be that as it may. Uh, Shevardnadze showed some uh, serious political um, uh, tact and shrewdness. Uh, he was a consummate politician, and he realized early on that with um, uh, the, uh, the father, the Ali of senior, um, he had to find a common ground and uh, build some uh, geoeconomic projects uh, that would bring the two countries together. Um, given, and they succeeded, uh, and that basically put Georgia on the map where America started to notice the importance of the South Caucasus as a transit corridor, and I hate using that word, uh, it's most, it's, 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 it you know, has to be conceptualized as a bridge between the East and West and not as a corridor, but, you know, be that as it may, you know, it, it, it put Georgia on the map geostrategically. Um, and now it has gotten to the point where uh, Southern Caucasus uh, uh, is, is, molding itself into this, you know, quote unquote, autonomous space, geopolitical space, uh, region, um, that is more inclined and more prone to establishing uh, relationships within the neighborhood. Uh, that is, you know, with Russia, with Azerbaijan, of course, with Turkey, with Iran, um, uh, the policy of basically, if I could just paraphrase it, of no conflict with any neighbor. Georgia is in no position to have a conflict with any neighbor. It has to take care of its, uh, uh, regain its territorial integrity, and it has to rebuild its, build its economy, build up and continue to build up its economy. And I think that if you look at the uh, sort of a geopolitically and geoeconomically, uh, I think uh, that formula that the Southern Caucasus offers uh, fits this strategic view. Um, yeah, but, uh, and I think it's a very shrewd and very smart and clever policy to pursue. Uh, yeah, you should. You, of course, any country should pursue its own um, its own best interests, right? And 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 in its own region. But the, the, what about Armenia and Azerbaijan? How how does Georgia interact with these two continuously feuding and fighting? Uh, neighbors and 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 uh, former former members of the of the same union. Well, Georgia has always been uh, a, a, a go between, if you will. Georgia has a great relationship with both Armenia and and Azerbaijan, as it does with Turkey and Iran. Um, uh, so Georgia has offered uh, you know its platform uh, to negotiate peace between Armenia and uh, and Azerbaijan. Um, yeah, but uh, Georgia is looking at itself uh, and its role in the region as a as a transit, as a bridge between the east and the west, and as a facilitator, uh, geopolitical sort of facilitator of geoeconomic projects, uh, while maintaining simultaneously um, uh, pragmatic, uh, you know, uh, uh, relations with every country I just listed. Uh, here is something very important. Um, Georgia has continued to stay on the Western path, even amidst this change, uh, geopolitical change and shift, because the whole three plus three plus two um, uh, formula uh, that has been uh, circulating around in Georgia currently uh, from the Sohomi State University uh, absolutely entails and includes uh, the United States and the, uh, and the European Union as two additional partners to, uh, you know, the three plus three format, which is three plus three plus, and therefore two. So um, this, this basically says that uh, South Caucasus as the region between Armenia, Georgia, uh, Armenia, Georgia, and Azerbaijan uh, can act as a bridge between the East and West, North and South. And no single country should be plucked out and used as a weapon against Russia. Uh, so all these you know, middle powers, the great powers, uh, obviously including the United States, 
and basically divide up the interests without actually turning these countries into weapons against, against Russia. Um, because the policy just has not worked. Historically, it has not worked. Any, you know, Western powers, uh, you know, a couple of centuries ago, always wanted to utilize this geos geostrategic space uh, to weaken Russia, and this simply has not worked. Uh, and today's sort of uh, model of doing the same isn't working either. Um, so, uh, you know, there is also this whole huge element with the Turkic world where Azerbaijan and Turkey are uh, uh, allies. Uh, and, uh, you know, Georgia is not, you know, contrary to the uh, sort of uh, 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 wrong-headed notion that Georgia may be cut in between. Georgia is not cut in between any of these uh, uh, schemes. Uh, so we know that in the Turk Turkic world, as Erdogan and as Turkey uh, uh, sees it, um, uh, sort of uh, includes Azerbaijan. Um, but then you have Iran uh, with, uh, you know, hundreds of thousands, with, you know, northeastern Iran with Azerbaijani uh, minority living there, uh, that Iran is very much, um, uh, very much worried of. Uh, so there is this sort of balancing act that these countries balance each other's interests out where you don't see a radical shift in the balance to a uh, you know, radical sort of disruption of this balance. Uh, and South Caucasus is, is precisely the region that offers that constant balancing uh, co uh, you know, a, a coalition, if you will, not against any one state. This is not your classic sort of, you know, um, you know, alliance building against Russia. Nobody's building alliances against any any state in that uh, in, in in that region. Even though in the early uh, you know twentieth uh, century uh, there was an attempt to join forces as three Southern Caucasus republics against the Tsarist uh, sort of imperial Russia. In my opinion, those days are all you know uh, long gone. And uh, you know, you know, the, the region does not uh, uh, is not at risk of uh, uh, sort of being hijacked by some sort of an alliance uh, uh, creation to balance, uh, you know, the Russian Federation. So if you look deeper uh, into what the South Caucasus offers is is nothing but cooperation. if just given a chance. Uh, uh, you know, so, you know, all every republic. Uh, including uh, Iran and Turkey and Azerbaijan want um, uninterrupted flow of uh, of uh, geoeconomic and, and petrochemicals into Europe, uh, and I don't think Russia necessarily wants uh, geopolitical turmoil in the region, right? Um, uh, and I don't think Iran wants this either. Uh, this is not to say that they won't defend their own lines. Of course, they will respect. Because I think it's quite important but that you can sense that no country is willing to disrupt this balance, where they will take on some sort of a leadership role in the region. Although you know, you know, there have been analysis before that Turkey might have that ambition, um, and if and when that might happen, again, Russia will act, and and uh, it will. Um, you know, sort of uh, make it known that uh, the South Caucasus is is, is its historic uh, sort of what it what it sees as its uh, historic uh, um, uh, uh, space of influence. Yeah, but the uh, thing is, the South Caucasus are the, the the South Caucasus are the the sphere of influence, not just of Russia, but also of Iran and also of Turkey, right. and historically, uh, yeah. historically and. They all have a state. Everybody has a stake in there. Right. And the, the, the thing I think an important aspect is that the South Caucasus is something that if it goes wrong, I mean, if the geopolitics around it goes wrong, has the potential of dividing the new ties between Russia and Iran. Right. That's yes. where the two of them might actually have a serious fallout. You were telling me about a infrastructure project just earlier to uh, connect Azerbaijani oil with um with with Turkey, and Korridor, yes. Can you yes. can you tell me about that one again? Well, the Zangezur corridor is the corridor that connects the mainland um, Azerbaijan with its uh, Nahichivan uh, region uh, through this corridor. And if it materialized, uh, it will do. It will base Azerbaijan will go directly through Turkey. Turkey will take out Azerbaijan's uh, pet, you know uh, natural resources, uh, and there is a possibility. 
that uh, Iran will be out of the equation, and that's why Iran, uh, a couple of weeks ago, just a few days ago, uh, made some blatant statements about uh, uh, what it considers to be the red line, that Iran has to stay uh, in this in this geoeconomic equation. Um, and is this is this an Azerbaijani project only? And that would run, of course, through Armenia, and Armenia well, and Azerbaijan just had a war, but it's also connected with Russia, the project, right? It is from the north south uh, north south um, uh, uh, corridor uh, that Russia wants also to use uh, with Iran, and uh, Russia said basically uh, Russia didn't express any any problems with it. Uh, so uh, you know just to calm the fears down on, with Iran, uh, but uh, at the same time with uh, Zangezur corridor, uh, Azerbaijan will be connecting. Uh, will be will be connecting its uh, uh, oil exports uh, with through Turkey. Um, so, given you know, given uh, Iran's position, uh, you know, it views Turkey as basically uh, um, sort of the fifth column of the West, you know, member of NATO. Uh, and so, obviously, worries, uh, and it's always been concerned geopolitically and in terms of security. Uh, that there could be a coalition building against it vis-a-vis uh, -vis this Turkic world uh, and what in the Caucasus is being also called as the Greater Middle East, where Israel's influence will come in and uh, mar you know sort of marginalize and and uh, you know Iran's strategic interests in the region. Um, but uh, nothing of the sort has happened. There's a specter of that, of course. Uh, uh, but um, uh, you know, uh, you know. Russia is always the part of the equation, uh, and um, uh, you know I would argue, I would, I would, I would bet that Russia would defend Iran uh, if uh, you know the collective West, uh, through its sort of uh, politics, the Black Sea strategic uh, uh, calculus uh, that the West has to establish uh, to to establish its foothold in the Black Sea to balance Russia, if that were to start to pose serious dangers to Moscow. Um, you know, I think uh, I think uh, Moscow will um, will ally with Iran. Um, uh, you know, uh, and so uh, there was also a danger of uh, uh, you know, uh, through Israel-Palestine the current war uh, that uh, Iran might have been dragged into uh, into the region um, into the conflict. And obviously, um, again, I think uh, Russia would back Iran uh, if that scenario where to materialize. Um, so you see there was this sort of this check, regional checker, checkerboard uh, of, of, of geopolitics and of, of sort of balancing interests um, that you know, increases chances to, to, you know, to uh, uh, mitigate risks of war because nobody wants regional major, uh, you know, regional conflagration. Uh, you know, Russia is busy with Ukraine. Uh, and it certainly doesn't want a repeat of 2008 or any, you know, or the Rose Revolution in Georgia. Uh, and uh, we see that it, it openly backed Baku, um, in my opinion, because it feels quite comfortable uh, with with Armenia. Because with Armenia, uh, you know, Putin understands that Armenia is not going anywhere, uh, and it's uh, it's sort of uh, uh, backstage dealing and. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, with uh, you know about this uh, Zangezur corridor uh, that has gotten Armenia into more trouble than than Russia um, has borne no you know you know no fruit for Armenia. So I think um, Russia is pretty confident that uh, uh, its foothold, its its uh, you know its its foothold and its influence in the region um, um, can be maintained maintained. Um, regardless of the war and its involvement in uh, in Ukraine. Okay, then the, the 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 big question is how to keep it stable or how to make sure that it that no escalation takes place, right? And there was I mean the danger between the war that that did happen between Armenia and Azerbaijan about Nagorno-Karabakh. I mean, that was a hot shooting war and it it could have had the potential of of um, growing, but it didn't. Um, do you think that na the Nagorno-Karabakh um, affair or or the conflict is now is now decisively ended? Do you do you see any any danger of that coming back? 
but Azerbaijan now took control of Nagorno-Karabakh, right? No, They've kind of gone, isn't it? Yeah, I, not within the current arrangement. I don't see, I don't see any way that either Armenia or Armenia's uh, supposed friends, newly found friends in in the West, are going to help Armenia somehow regain those territories, read or return those uh, those territories. Azerbaijan, what Azerbaijan has done strategically, I think, is uh, remarkable. Uh, you know, it has regained its territorial sovereignty. Uh, took back Nagorno-Karabakh um, and regained uh, basically, you know, the whole balancing act with Russia too. Russia has, um, you know, Russia has basically now uh, abandoned, I don't want to say abandoned, but it doesn't really matter what Russia does with Armenia, uh, but um, a tilting of alliances is quite obvious. Russia, you know, basically uh, stood neutral, but at the same time backed, uh, you know, Uh, Azerbaijan because um, because theoretically Russia should have supported Armenia, Armenia because it's in the CIS right it should have that's the idea but it like correct but, but Russia Azerbaijan also, wooed Russia yeah. away Azerbaijan right you know Armenia could have well I think Armenia made some mistakes but mostly I think uh uh I think um Uh, Russia uh, took into consideration Turkey. Uh, Russia understands that Turkey is a, a, a potential serious uh, competitor, a regional competitor, uh, and it would much rather uh, uh, sort of become a member of the trilateral alliance, if you will, uh, with uh, Azerbaijan and Turkey uh, than, um, you know, uh, Uh, spoil its relations or escalate its relation, uh, you know, um, uh, escalate the risks uh, or security risks with Turkey because over over Armenia. Um, uh, but um, I think, um, you know, with Armenia, uh, what happened uh, it was, I think, uh, uh, a false hope once again that uh, the West was coming uh, to pluck Armenia out of um, Russia's betrayal. Uh, and that simply did not work out and won't work out. And I think, um, contrary to the popular opinion, Russia should not worry about uh, Armenia because it's not going anywhere and because France cannot do anything to change Armenia's course. Russia will always be a dominant power in the region. Uh, and the idea that Armenia will, um, with its, you know, Western um, uh, friends, uh, And uh, you know, restart the war of uh, bringing you know, reincorporating these regions back. I think is a uh, uh, is an absurd notion. Uh, so Armenia is stuck, basically. Um, Because um, is it is it is it is it a fair portrayal to say that of the three small co um, southern Caucasus nations, each one basically has a smaller or bigger conflict with with a neighbor? Georgia with, with a bigger neighbor, Georgia with Russia, Armenia with Turkey, and Azerbaijan with Iran. And Azerbaijan and Armenia have a, a pretty big conflict. And this this constellation, this geopolitical constellation is like fueling a lot of the of the balancing act between them and therefore of the interests between the big ones, Russia, Iran, and Turkey. And I think that balancing act will be played out among those uh large you know uh, uh, larger powers in the region uh and i think what georgia is proposing at this you know uh, there there are concepts and theories about this as i mentioned earlier uh to turn to mold its re this region i think um if i recall correctly aliyev has also mentioned this uh, in his uh, uh several times in, in his public appearances saying that outside powers are basically welcome but they're not welcome to um Uh, reshape regional geopolitics according to their own interests. Um, uh, so, you know, it, it really dovetails into the um, whole concept of uh, uh, turning uh, South Caucasus into this, um, you know, region of uh, geopolitical and geoeconomic uh, stability, um, uh, where it, it will conduct its foreign policy Uh, it will it will be sort of an inclusive foreign policy for Western powers, the United States, obviously, um, 
as well as uh, you know as well as especially as well as uh, uh, regional uh, uh, regional powers uh, and the division of respective interests uh, uh, will be in terms of uh, you know uh, provocations or uh, you know propaganda but uh, in terms of uh, you know, practical sort of pragmatic approach to, um, you know, dividing up, uh, you know, geoeconomic and geopolitical interests uh, in a way that uh, um, does not affect or does not pose sort of national security threat, uh, mainly to Russia in terms of Georgia, uh, its relations with Georgia, and then, uh, you know, f you know, for Turkey and Azerbaijan and uh um, and and to perhaps lesser extent to Iran. Um, yeah, that that does make sense. At, at some point, we should have a, a conversation with uh, some Mongolian colleagues because Mongolia has has similar predicaments on the other side of the former Soviet Union. Um, but um, thank you very much, Lasha, for this update. We'll stay in touch, especially in regard to the to the upcoming elections in October, and um, we'll talk again soon. Thank you very much, Pascal.